LAZ, man, you heard. I put in extra work this week. Making sure I dropped that extreme fire, you heard. I ain't playing no more games at all, man. Everything a movie. You heard? That's going to be the new motto soon. Everything a movie. You feel what I'm saying? But I got a bunch of bunch of fire joints still in the cut, man. It's going to be a it's going to be a hot month, you heard? And that's a fact. Story of Pottersville is in the works. It's going to be epic. You heard, remember I told you that it's going to premiere on Patreon. And when it's time, I'm going to light YouTube up with it. But you heard, holler at me if you need those collabs, 24-hour turnaround. Look me up if you ain't familiar with the history. I'm something like a veteran. You're Z-Boy. These haters be acting like I be online begging for cash app like... Excuse me, sir, please. Can you spare me a dollar, please? I, I, I told a good story, man. Can you give me a dollar, man? Come on, man. I'm trying to get a cup of coffee, man. Please, one dollar, please, one dollar. That nigga was telling them niggas ain't no hiding, bro. He was exposing the cribs, pulling them niggas out in the yard, telling them, showing them how he's standing, and telling them niggas he wasn't accepting nothing other than that. That nigga was the first crib to go to the island in the beacon and make it understood that he was a man, bro. We was on the island in 9-9. We was in the beacon and shit. Shit, I was in HDM in 9-9. But the nigga Dutch, we in motherfucking, we in, we in the beacon. When we get in the beacon, the beacon, first let me just give you the severity of how the beacon was, was the new HDM. Bottom line, the, the, the level of, of barbaric, Fucking savages was in there, which was ridiculous. I mean, that shit was kind of more intense than even the Mod 8 shit that I was telling you with all the Far Rockaway niggas. The reason why the Beacon was a lot more intense because it was HDMified to me. And I say, hey, when I mean by HDMified was HDM had too many apes, master apes, and one fucking holding areas like type shit like eight out of ten niggas is super savage yeah and it, and when hdm closed a lot of dudes got sent to the beacon yeah exactly so let's call that shit the new hdm so because that's exactly what the level of intensity that shit was so when i get there the first time i'm gonna give you the whole eight shit and then cuz cuz in order for you to understand what this nigga dutch should get his flowers for was because the nigga Dutch because of this so now when the, my first time coming in the house they bring me in the house they send me to what 10 block this shit about to be retarded we get in 10 block, 10 block. I get in there they let me in as soon as I get in they open the door I come in I look this shit look like a jungle, my nigga. Niggas, all you hear is noise. Niggas screaming from here to here. Niggas is talking out the shower. You can see niggas' heads holding full conversations with niggas. Niggas is jumping from the top tier to, to, to the floor. Niggas is running around doing shit, all kind of shit. So I'm like, oh, this shit look like a jungle. So when I come in, the police close the door, tell me where the cell at. I drag my bag, I put it in the cell, I close the door, my property, and I come out. Now, I know not to go sit like I'm scared in no motherfucking corner. So I know to go get in everybody's face, you know what I mean? So I get up, I'm walking where everybody is at. So this one ugly nigga, this nigga looked at like a motherfucking gargoyle, right? I look at this nigga, little ugly, strong looking nigga, this nigga, his whole body, he, this nigga just looked like one of them niggas that was born to slap a nigga head off, right? So I don't know this nigga yet, but I can tell, so I don't really, I'm just breathing it, I'm, I'm just getting into the house. So I look at the nigga, the nigga like, yo, when the wolf come out to play, the little boys run away. He said, I ain't going to cut none of you niggas. He said, because if I cut you, you're going to tell. 
He said, but if I fuck you, you're going to be too embarrassed to tell. I said, oh, my motherfucking God. I said, what type of shit? I got processed that shit. That ain't no regular shit for a nigga to be saying. <laughs> and how does he even know that a nigga will be embarrassed and won't tell? He must have did that shit. So I said, I ain't playing with this nigga here. If this shit he talking, I immediately, I, the way I process shit like that, I'm not going to sit back and wait for you to decide to make me a target. When I see this big, stupid, crazy nigga, he wasn't even all that big, but he was definitely very intimidating. And so, but, so I go straight to this nigga. I, I just get up on him, zoom. I just crowd that nigga's face. Everywhere he turned, I was right there looking him in his face. If he went for the phone, I was in front of that motherfucker. He went to grab a tray, I was in front of... That nigga said, God damn, this nigga's everywhere. I just wanted him to know that motherfucker. You know, if we going to have a problem, let you, you going to understand right now and I ain't playing with you. So that nigga, I guess, you know, in any sense, he's supposed to, we are supposed to get his shaking or some shit in an instance of what I was doing, but the nigga, he backed, he backed off. So I seen that nigga, I'm like, I walked away saying, this nigga know what time it is. If he act up, I'm basically letting him know, I'm going to sabotage your whole physical. Cause this nigga, he talking about butts and shit like that. I ain't playing no games with that, right? Yeah. That's going to turn you to a superhero. So it shouldn't be hard to believe. But, so I sit back and I'm observing more niggas. I'm, now I'm like, damn, this shit is dangerous. I ain't never been nowhere where a nigga announced in the middle of the floor that, you know, that one of his instruments of war is the fucking nigga. So boom. So I already decided from that, if a nigga fuck around with me, I'm, 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 I'm not playing with no nigga in this house. My nigga, every nigga in that house was savage. They had some Brooklyn nigga in there. His name was uh, P. Murder. You know what I'm saying? He wore that shit well. You know what I'm saying? It was a uh, couple of other niggas was in there. And, and I think this the, my, my man from Harlem, a little nigga named Two. Two was in there. So anyway, while we in this shit, uh, this shit is so crazy that after about two days, some nigga from Queens, I got to get this nigga a shout out. He was from Jamaica, Queens. I don't know the nigga name, but his alias was Devon King. And the nigga had a ponytail, dark skin nigga. This how crazy the beacon was. That nigga ran up on me after watching me for three days. He was like, yo, man, look, man, I, I, I see you. I know you see me. He like, I ain't blood. I ain't none of that shit. He said, look, look around you, bro. All of these niggas is blood. He said, uh, I don't need no nigga to help me fight or nothing. You know what I'm saying? I get busy. He said, I can look at you and tell you get busy too. He said, oh, it'll be smart for us to hold each other down. Though He said, if, if, if I get into it, these niggas going to try to jump me. If you get into it, they're going to try to jump you. So the nigga was like, I, I just make sure you get a fair one. I just want you to make sure I get a fair one. I said, that shit made a lot of sense to me. I was like, you know what? I respect that. I was like, I'm with that. So he was like, say no more. So... That, that whoever this nigga was, he already was in the house with these niggas, right? But he was glad that another official nigga came in there that wasn't blood or none of that shit. So, okay, that's why he did that. So when he did that shit, then his man worked in the kitchen. That nigga came to me and was like, yo, my man just sent me this. He sent the fucking grill that you rest the chicken on in the oven, the grill. Mm. He sent that. So me and that nigga bust that shit down. The whole night we sharpening shit in the cell. Swinging, ringing, ringing, ringing. So boom. Then the morning when shit popped out, the blood niggas was, the blood niggas came to us because them niggas heard all that shit from the night. Niggas was telling them, yo, them niggas sharpening shit. So the kid, one of these niggas, I think he was from... Red Hook or some shit like that. Pink Houses. The nigga name was, I think the nigga was calling himself Save or some shit like that, but it wasn't the other Save. The green eyed, brown skin nigga. So, you know, some was official. He looked like a nigga that was getting money, fly nigga, right? So, that, you know, he was pretty loud in his little set. So, he was the one to come up and he was like, yo, uh, 
Niggas is saying y'all niggas is, is sharpening bangers and shit. You know, niggas like y'all, yeah, yeah, we like we are. He was like, uh, <laughs> he said, who y'all got that for? So niggas was like, whoever, whoever violated. So he was like, I'm saying, I just want to make sure you ain't got that for none of my homies. Nigga, this is for whoever. So he was like, I'm saying, what y'all saying like this for my homies? Nigga, if your homies violate, this for whoever. So we pushing that shit, right? So, so you know, them niggas, look, they don't like it, but they ease off half of the respect it because son ready to push his, and I'm definitely about to push mine. So them niggas back off and just realize we're forced to be working. So uh, I really do respect the Devon King nigga because, you know, that nigga, he put both of us in, in the clouds on these niggas. And it's 50 niggas in the house. So, you know, that was a power move he made along with me. But I give him the credit for being there to steer the plot, the platform us. But from there... The nigga that was screaming he was on ass, his name was Governor. Queens nigga, Jamaica Queens nigga. They call that nigga Demo or whatever out there. That nigga was a beast. Later on, me and him got tight as a result of Maserati Fox. The nigga 50 gave a million dollars. You know what I mean? Only reason why I even gave the nigga uh, Governor uh, Demo a chance to associate with me was a result that he was properly introduced to me by the nigga Fox, F-O, a.k.a. Maserati Fox. And he told me that was his man. So I took a look at this nigga and I was like, where does this nigga fit to be somebody's friend and he on ass? <laughs> He had the building going crazy too Because a lot of niggas didn't really know That this nigga was a booty bandit You know what I mean Until later Not that it really would have mattered Because this nigga was so much of a fucking beast And a savage You, you feel me You, you Like niggas had you, For me to relate to this nigga Just to tell you what type of animal this nigga was I had to let him know I'd kill him Every 15 days just to keep them balanced. Every 15 days, I used to have to let them know, your gov, don't play with me. Them niggas, are, they're going to read about you if you play with me. I used to have to tell them shit like that. Like, you're going to be on Rackers Island history. But that, you know, I'm not going to lie, that's my man because I did so much shit. I just utilized that nigga. I, I, I learned what, what the nigga... Maserati Fox was telling me I, I, I got the value out of dealing with that nigga so I got it because he was a fucking beast that nigga pop on anybody in, in a hot second you even mention a nigga in a phrase and if the phrase ain't proper he's smashing the nigga you feel me so I just became that nigga dog uh, owner so anyway to make a long story short, not to glamorize myself, because that nigga was a glamorized figure in itself. He didn't, that nigga scream out the window and had a whole building shaking in OBCC. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm not going to, I couldn't have did that. That nigga could have. I probably could have, but he knew he could do it. So anyway, make a long story short, this is where we at. The nigga, uh, the nigga, but the nigga Dutch. Now, Dutch is a Brownsville nigga. They put me in the drug program, 13 block after that shit with King, with the girl. She separated me and King, so I'm in 13 block. While I'm in 13 block, Dutch is across from me. So the nigga Dutch like, yo, what's up? Me and him in the yard one time, and the nigga talking to me and shit. You know, I'm on my Harlem shit. You know, but you know, when I get with my real Browns villains, I always let a nigga know, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm from out that backyard. I'm from that dirt, that dirt box, nigga. I'm from the Ville, nigga, where it's real. So, you know, the nigga, I like to flash that card sometimes on a nigga when the nigga just think I'm a Harlem nigga. So I just happen to tell a nigga Dutch, like, yo, man, nigga, you know I'm from the Ville too, right? So Dutch was like, where, nigga? And I told a nigga, and that nigga just lit up and was like, oh shit, Mr. Rudy, your uncle? <laughs> the nigga knew my uncle and all that. And it's not even my uncle, the Rudy nigga. 
the Rudy nigga is my uncle friend. But I quickly accepted him even knowing Rudy because I was like, this nigga from my box. My whole point got established with him is that you know my uncle. That nigga knew everything. Yo, your house on the hill and this and that, right? So this little nigga Dutch, he was like four foot five, bro, without exaggeration. Not the slightest exaggeration. I couldn't see him being five feet. This nigga was like Adam Ant. But reason why this nigga deserve his motherfucking flowers is this building was predominated lead 90% blood, bro. And number 90% gangster blood. Let's say that shit because everybody that blood ain't a savage. But this shit was on a super savage level. You got niggas like Sherm the Worm in the building putting hits on everybody controlling the whole fucking jail from the box. You feel me? Queensbridge nigga, shout out to that nigga. Super deserves his flowers. His street flowers is definitely mandatory. But anyway, you know, that shit just got crazy with Dutch because Dutch was crip. So Dutch was the type of nigga that he let everybody know he was crip, even though he in there. And them niggas, Crips was hiding at the time. Them niggas, one or two of you ain't know a crip was in sight. But them niggas was sniffing them niggas out. They was calling a nigga crabs, right, or whatever. But I don't know what they was calling them all that derogatory shit. Cause you know I ain't in that, but I know that though. But anyway, so the nigga uh, Dutch instantly was on his. When them niggas would be like, yo, what's popping? That nigga would be like this, what's cracking? Mad loud, right? Over crazy. And that was his shit for any of them. And that was the saying, because I say what's popping, I've been around so much of that shit. That motherfucker used to say, what's cracking? Mad hard, right? Like, pop them niggas popping. Pop they bubble type shit. So I don't know what the fuck that was, but I could tell he just was trying to kill a crack with his pop. His pop, they pops with his cracking. <laughs> so it's so the nigga, the nigga, uh, the nigga Dutch, a lot of niggas ain't like that shit sometimes. Not a lot of niggas. The, them niggas probably ain't like that. I don't even think that he established himself so well with them niggas that even though they didn't like that shit, them niggas just honestly just respected it. Because he was a nigga that if you wanted to get it, he'd get it. So one time I'm walking... The blood niggas is talking to me. They always like talking to me. So I'm walking, I'm talking with these niggas. And it's a new one with them niggas. So now, the nigga Dutch come up. The niggas is like, yo, Dutch was popping. Dutch like, was clacking. He says super loud, cause the new, he know it's a new nigga that don't know what time it is with him. So the dude walked past the new nigga like, yo homie, what's up with that nigga? Y'all letting that motherfucking, whatever they call them niggas live? And they, the, 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 the blood niggas that's walking with me is so official, they don't even feel under pressure from this question. They just, it is what it is. So they, it is what it is in this nigga. Like, you know, they ain't even explaining. But the nigga, the, 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 the new blood niggas pressed. He like, yo, man, uh, what's up, man? What's going on with that nigga, that faggot ass nigga, this and that? So them niggas got tired. Them niggas like, yo, you want to press that nigga, go ahead. He's open to the menu, nigga. We never told you he's off the menu. So that nigga like, yeah, I'ma show y'all niggas. Y'all niggas ain't real white. You know how they get to talking all that shit. So now, some go to the nigga Dutch. Dutch flips this nigga backwards, slams him all on his head, mings him. With, I mean, just ridiculous, right? How big was the kid though? Huh? How big? The kid, the kid had to be damn near six feet. Dutch flipped this nigga. I seen Dutch beat a nigga. He broke the glass in 13 block with a nigga that was 240 fucking pounds, bro. And, and with his hands, he wasn't, he was Shy Wells with his hands. And this nigga was Adam Ant, small as a motherfucker. This little nigga was running around there and he was the only crip in the building until his man came in from the Ville. Some other nigga named Flo, skinny, linky nigga. The kid Flo came in, I don't know if I said it already, but the kid Flo came in there. My son robbed him from Harlem, my nigga Bo, Charlie Bo. The nigga Charlie Bo, we was in motherfucking 10 block. 
You said son pressed that nigga, son smashed him out, the blood nigga that came in. And then what happened after that with like with that blood nigga or whatever? That blood nigga, it's, you know, eight out of, Dutch, Dutch did this to about 10 of their homies. So this was a regular occurrence. <clears throat> Any new nigga that came in and questioned Dutch shit, the bloods was letting them niggas find out for themselves. Uh -huh. Tell them, huh? You say he was letting them find out for themselves? <laughs> yeah, they was. They'd tell them, they'd tell them, but they wasn't breaking their neck to tell a nigga. Because they, I guess they felt like, if you see us and you know we gangsters, and we ain't saying nothing about this crab nigga over here, something spicy about him. If you can't figure that shit out, you deserve to get your ass whipped. <laughs> so I guess they pretty much was, you know, that was their way of letting uh, Dutch earn his keep too, though. You know, not that they was trying to sabotage him. They ain't gonna send nothing at him. But if a nigga act like he was stupid, like he didn't know that that nigga Dutch was Adam and... <sighs> They was letting him go. Go ahead, nigga. Go. That's a plate right there. Dutch crushed every nigga that went to him like that. Dutch is... Dutch... You know, I love that little nigga, man, because I respect so much. He's so much of a man. And, 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 and that little body, bro, that shit ain't limiting him from nothing. And that nigga ain't had no gun, no knife, no nothing. And I, I repeat, the beacon was 95%. Blood, bro. Five may be an exaggeration, but 90 is definitely not. And that nigga Dutch came in there before any, he's deserved more flowers than that Hollywood nigga. That name was shaking every motherfucking thing for beat niggas all senseless in the houses. Dutch was talking this shit in the yard. You know, I done seen, I done seen Hollywood turn the house down. I done seen that nigga come to, uh, where I was at, man, when, when that happened. What, I was in Two Upper? I'm in there, I don't know who, where this Sandman nigga was from, but son had to be official. He could have been from Brooklyn or something. Big, tall, brown skin nigga. He really looked like the Sandman nigga. A lot of these niggas that be saying they Sandman, I be checking, it's not, it's, it don't be the nigga that I'm talking about. But I know this nigga's official because I seen that nigga question Sherm the one. And Sherm handle was super, super serious at the time, man. I didn't have waste. I learned some serious shit for being in the midst of that because the nigga Sandman, I'm gonna just get into it. The nigga Sandman was like, yo, he asked Sean, we was in the cages in OBCC. He was like, yo, I wanna ask you something, God, you know, he said, you cut one of my comrades and I wanna know why you did it. And that nigga Sean was like, yo, you questioning me? And the nigga was like, respectfully. Sherm said, I'm gonna allow you to do this shit this one time out of respect for your handle, but don't question me no more. He was like, yo, he said, so why you did it? That nigga said that nigga was a liar and a thief and he can't be trusted. And the nigga Sandman laughed and was like, that's all you gonna give me? He was like, that's all you need to know. So when son said that, I flipped that shit a couple of times, a liar and a thief and, all right, then I broke that shit down and I said, hold on, man. If a nigga a lie, he a steal. If you a steal, you a kill. So that makes sense to me. That make perfect fucking sense. So that's why I don't like liars. A liar is a nasty motherfucker. You feel what I'm saying? That they, they, you can't put nothing past them. So when you see somebody a liar, I guess Sherm philosophy was once I see you a liar, we might as well take you out back and shoot you now. Cause you gonna do something wrong. My foot, I don't wanna get lost. That nigga, I was in two up with the nigga Sandman. We was all in the box. Me, him, Sherm the worm and shit. My relations with Sherm was kinda, kinda serious because of a, a official nigga from Brooklyn that was out there dominating Queens. The nigga name is Free. 
You know what I mean? Some was super, super official. You know what I mean? One of the most official niggas I met on the island. But I don't want to get lost on, on that neither because these Dutch flowers. Free, I love you. Rest in power. That nigga, you know, deserve New York City flowers, bro. But you going to get yours, homie. But I'm going to separate it so you can get your due. Hollywood comes up to the house. That nigga looked in two upper. He looked in the gate. It was about 10 niggas standing around waiting for him to come in. That nigga seen that tall nigga, he looked up. That nigga said, Sam man, Sam man. That nigga said, that's right, baby. He said, you know if you come in here, I'm twisting your shit, fam. <laughs> that nigga turned that house down, bro. Shit, that's smart for a nigga to do if he knows. Man, ain't no, I ain't look at that nigga yeah. like it was pussy. At all, because you know he popped half the building with his hands. The kid, the kid, Sandman was blood. I think, yeah, I believe so, because he was questioning Sean. You can't be no neutral nigga questioning this nigga. I mean, you could, but you know, I didn't take it as that. That nigga, Sandman, is blood. I can officially stamp that. Even though I'm, even though I'm not sure, but I'm certain. So now, one day, I'm going to going to court. And, you know, they line you up, and if they don't line you up, you go to the motherfucking gym in the beacon to go to court. So when I get there, I see the nigga Charlie Bo. So you know quite naturally that nigga Bo, he gonna, uh, he gonna come fuck with me. You know, cause you gonna come sit around some shit in the beacon. You ain't gonna fuck around and sit with just anybody cause you could get ravished in there by any nigga that team up with a nigga on your ass. So now while I'm sitting there, now Bo wasn't my right hand man or nothing. Let me clear this shit out. Bo was just a nigga that I knew from the street, right? That he was a gangster and uh, we was cool, you know, from that situation with the gun and the car and the nigga shooting on two fifths. This how I met Bo. Bo, cause to let you know he wasn't my friend, he just was a nigga that I met from a friend and we was around each other. But when when I was with him, Bo had a Money Green 535 BM with Money Green BBs. So uh, my nigga Mike Spencer introduced me to the nigga. So we in the car, we on 2-5th. The nigga Bo got a, a, a hammer in the car. And uh, some nigga was carjacking somebody or something. This around the time when that California lifestyle was invading New York. Niggas was carjacking somebody and shots started going off repetitive. You know when that shit start sounding like the bongos. <laughs> So niggas is like, oh shit, this shit heavy machinery type shit. On 125th Street, every car is back to back, so you can't even move. So boom, the nigga Bo trying to move and shit. While he trying to move, he also going for a gun that he got in between the driver and passenger seat in the middle. So I already knew he put a gun there because I seen him when I got in. So. While he going for that, he feel my hand there. Yeah. So the nigga know, he don't know me like that. He like, he looked back at me and said, what the fuck you doing? I said, nigga, you can't drive and shoot at the same fucking time. You get the motherfucking will. Let me get the gun. So he was like, uh, nah, I said, nigga, I got it already. Don't worry about nothing. You focus on the will. I'm like, if any of that, I would well, if any of that shit come anywhere near us, I'm getting out of this shit and I'm down in that nigga. Long as them shots stay away from us, I, you know, I got it. So, sure as shit, we end up, the car separated a little bit. We skied out of there, we get out of there and shit. So, I end up going, when I went to the beacon, the nigga Bo had the phone. He had nine block and a smash. Him and some nigga named Born from Patterson, right? I got ill super story behind this shit because I get a nine block and the nigga Born leaves. No, the nigga Bo leaves and he left me 
and the nigga Born the phone. So I had the phone in nine block, and me and Born had to level up in there against the Bloods. In that motherfucker, we ain't never had no war, but we had to, you know, we had to make sure them niggas understood what the fuck was going on with me and him, like, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, that nigga, uh, the, the nigga, uh, this is all about Dutch, man. I love you, boy. You know what I'm saying? You deserve your motherfucking flowers, because you was the first crip to cut through that motherfucking island with your fucking head up, bro. You was the first fucking I was there. That my little nigga Dutch. That nigga Dutch from the field, man. You worth your flowers, boy. You Where you said he was from? He's from Sally? I don't know if he was from Sally. I don't have no exact location on him. I just give the Dutch the whole field, bro. Because I could tell he was a Browns villain, bro. <laughs> <clears throat> the nigga Bo come next to me We sitting on the motherfucking bleachers So all them niggas Niggas is coming in for court The flow nigga come in He hype as a motherfucker He looking like motherfucking uh, He looking like motherfucking My nigga you know when them niggas Is walking to the fight th- up the aisle And they throwing blows mm. That nigga running <laughs> And he ran about two, three official niggas. <clears throat> he went up, yo, son, listen, man, these niggas yapped me this bitch nigga right here, son. I just, I just want the one with him. Yo, son, just hold me now. I want the one. Son, I want the one with this nigga. So he got like three official niggas. <clears throat> now... <clears throat> so much that I already know <clears throat> that a nigga ain't got a panic or none of that corny shit because niggas is powerful. I ain't in no gang or none of that shit. <clears throat> but I was well balanced in that building. So when they came up, I see the niggas he going to get. These niggas respect my shit, so they come up. And what you said, what you said had happened to son? Them niggas did some sucker shit to him. The nigga bowing him, bowing him. The nigga Flo went into the house and nine block. Him and this nigga named Divine with a cut on his face. I think Divine was from the Bronx. That's my nigga too. Divine was a grimy nigga though. I don't give a fuck where you at, nigga. I'm just keeping it official. But that was my nigga. We was cool, but I recognize you was a grimy nigga. He had to, nah, he one of them niggas with a cut on his face for being grimy. You feel me? I mean, I don't know how he got cut on his face, but he one of them niggas you see the cut and you know he done did some grimy shit. Not everybody would have cut on their face look like that, but I knew this nigga was, and the situation showed it. So when Flo got in the house, Flo was a new nigga. He don't know nobody. Divine and Bo, Bo got the phone, Divine under Bo. So, you know, it's like they in charge of 40 niggas. You know how that shit go. So when the nigga come in there, them niggas divine yoked them out and, and, and Bo took his chain. And when that nigga Flo was leaving out of there, Flo was on some, I'ma get all y'all niggas. He like, watch, y'all niggas, y'all got the wrong nigga. He like, y'all got the wrong nigga. So when they moved him, they just moved that nigga to another house. So I guess Bo and them niggas thought that shit was a game till that nigga came through that gym. So the nigga came in, right? He was like, I just want the one. He was like, come on, big man. And he was a skinny nigga, whoever this flow nigga from the Ville is. That nigga deserved the street flowers. You getting them right now, playboy. He came in the gym. That nigga was like, big man. So the nigga Bo was like, what, huh? I could tell Bo, God bless him, rest in power, but I'm telling the truth. I could tell Bo had fear because he seen the motivating factors in this nigga. And Flo was a skinny nigga and Bo was a big nigga, right? So the nigga Flo, them niggas threw the hands. Son hit my man a hundred (laughs) times. Then she said, my man said, ah! I tried to 
big man Russell. And he still uppercutted him to death. Look, look at him now, my kid got me, he's gonna get moody. And then nigga, yo, this shit was crazy. God bless my nigga Bo, rest in, rest in power, homie. So the nigga Bo, and then, you know, we both from Harlem. Bo got to go to court with me, too. So not only did he get his ass whipped, but he got to sit in court with me and wear that shit. So while we in court, we in Supreme Court, in the small ass cell, son got his head down. You know, I'm looking and I'm like, damn, this nigga feeling bad. So he like, yo, I did bad out there. I'm like, nah, you did your thing. I lied to the nigga. You know what I mean? Because I didn't want to, I didn't want to chip out his spirit because he knew I was home team. And, and I, I, I seen him get his ass whipped. You know what I mean? So the nigga, I was like, nah, you did your thing. But he was really shameful the whole time of that. But, you know, looking back in retrospect, he should have been shameful. What they did to that man was, you know, I'm not saying, you know, streetwise to rob a nigga ain't really a bad thing because you out there starving, man, and people got to get it out of get it. Not that I condone it. I done it. I understand it. But the way they robbed this man was something that you got to keep conscious of, man. People, you can't just do, some people so fucking retarded, they think they can do anything to somebody, and they don't think that that shit is going to get serious. I don't see how. Well, Bo suffered from that. You know what I mean? He lucky that son ain't get his hand on a piece. That son just came in there diplomatically and handled him with his hands. I guess he was confident in his hands. Because a less nigga confident, not confident in his hands would have came with something. And my man wouldn't have been able to stop that. I wasn't jumping in front of no knives. Not for no shit like that. I told you I don't steal. You know, so... You said that was son man like that? Oh, Flo, yeah, that was his man. He co-signed for that nigga as soon as he came in the door. Because he knew that nigga was a crip like him that wasn't going for it. He knew he didn't have to see that nigga perform. So I know that was his man. For him to know that nigga was going to come in, and the, nah, I ain't going to lie, he probably, he knew that nigga. But Dutch was a nigga, and that's how you know Dutch was powerful. Because blood niggas terminate your ass for recruiting. That nigga was recruiting, bro. And he was revealing any crip that came in there and tried to hide. That nigga was calling the bloods from the other house. Yo, that nigga crip right there. And he had tell a crip nigga, you better rap that shit, nigga. Ain't no hiding. That nigga was telling them niggas, ain't no hiding, bro. He was exposing the crips, pulling them niggas out in the yard, telling them, showing them how he's standing, and telling them niggas he wasn't accepting nothing other than that. That nigga was the first crip to go to the island in the beacon and make it understood that he was a man, bro. 